Alright, hello everybody and welcome back to another edition of the Forex Market Preview. My name is Jason Stapleton and I want to thank you very much for joining me this week. And uh, some of you are going to know about the video earlier this week and some of you are not because I didn't put it out to my list. I probably should have, but I was kind of in a hurry and so I didn't really mess with it. I just, I, I had a really good war room training and I just decided to put it out to everybody. And so I just posted the War Room training to YouTube, and if you follow me on YouTube, then you got it. But if you're on my email list, you might not have. And so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to piggyback off of that training that I did and that I showed you guys and posted to YouTube. And if you didn't see that training, I'm going to put a link to it underneath this video. So whether you're watching it at Trade Empowered or whether you are watching it on YouTube, just look underneath the video uh, in the About section or in the little area where I've got the, um, the blurb about the video, and it should have the link to the old video. You're going to want to watch that video first before you watch this one, because everything that we're going to talk about today is going to piggyback off of what I did in that video and the training that I did. And I'm going to try and keep this as short as I can, but I've just got a feeling that this is going to be a, uh, a longer video than, than usual. But it's okay, because good training doesn't happen quickly. It's something that you have to do over time, and you got to do right. So um, this earlier this week, I posted a training that I did, as I said, from the War Room, where I talked about looking for areas where the market is going to reverse. And we took the time to kind of draw out this potential area of reversal on New Zealand yen. And we identified the market coming into the initial zone. And I said, none of this stuff had happened yet. So none of this stuff over here had even happened. And we, all we had done is come up into the zone. And I went through and walked through the analysis with you on how we came up with this little green box as, as the potential area where the market was likely to find resistance. And to find out all that preview stuff, go watch the other video. But now we find ourselves... The market had run all the way up, and I told you guys in that video, sorry for moving everything around, I told you guys in that video, hey, watch for, I said, selling right here, very aggressive sell right up into the zone. I said, more conservative, wait for the double top. And then you get a retest of the high, look for bearish divergence, and I kind of walked you through counter trend trading 101. What's amazing, or not so amazing, is just how well it works is because we saw the market come into the zone. We identified the zone as an area where the market was likely to find resistance. The market had moved into an overbought condition as we made our initial test. Then we got a little pullback out of the zone, followed by a rally back up in to retest the highs, a nice symmetrical double top here, and look at what we got down here on the RSI. We got some really nice bearish divergence on there as a further signal that the market may be coming to conclusion or co com an area of completion. And the question always becomes after we set this stuff up and, and you're like, okay, Jason, I, I see the structure, I understand how to do it, but how am I supposed to make money with this? Right, and that's really the secret sauce because a lot of guys can, a lot of people can come in and do analysis, and they can show you what happened in the past. But in order to figure out what you're going to do, you have to have a set of rules and conditions that tell you when to trade. Because it's one thing to recognize and to do all of your analysis correct and to see the zone and to understand that the market's moved into the zone. It's another thing entirely to know. Okay, at what point do I buy or sell? And so what I told you guys in that other video was, I said, hey, you can, can you come up and just sell as the market enters this zone? Yeah, absolutely you could. It's a very aggressive sell. You're risking the market just continuing to run on you. And if you take an aggressive sell like that, you're going to have a lot of trading opportunities. But again, a lot of those trading opportunities are going to be losers because you didn't wait for any added confirmation. One of the things that I'm real big on is what I call building a case for entry. That is to say that we decide what conditions have to be met, and we use a very simple process of if-then, asking if the market does this, then we do this, and running through our analysis in order to determine where are these areas where the market is likely to reverse. And then once we find them, to, uh, to exploit them. So we find the aggressive sell here, then the retracement followed by the press back higher, giving us the nice symmetrical double top. This gives us a second opportunity to enter. Much more conservative entry now, isn't it? RSI divergence, double top, into the zone, potential selling opportunity. We could also wait for an even more conservative trade, and that's the trade that we take inside of the war room. 
So what happened was inside the syndicate, my morning war room, we were walking through this analysis, and the very next day we came in and we said, hey, look, the double top happened. We got the break of structure. Market did exactly what we thought it was going to do, and now we're getting a rally back up. So now what's our third option? Our third option is the most conservative option. It's the 2618 trade. This is a trade that I give away absolutely for free. You can go and watch it if you want to. Market double top, break of structure, rally back up into the 618. We're going to sell the 618, looking for a press back down into previous structure and potentially some follow-on targets down into a 127 extension. And as you guys can see, all of that happened right here. So how many different trading opportunities do you have here? Well, you actually have three. You have a very aggressive trade as the market moves into the zone. You have a more conservative trade as the market double tops, bearish divergence inside the zone. And you have an extremely conservative trade where the market double tops, break of structure, followed by a 618 retracement, giving us a 2618 trade. Any one of those would have produced a profit inside of this particular, tra uh, this particular trade. And it doesn't always work that way. I don't want to give you any indication that this is the way you always see it. Naturally, you'll have far more aggressive trades than you will 2618 trades. But you can see how beautifully this worked. And so I want to do something today in the Forex market preview that I haven't done in a while. And I'm hoping here that I can make this thing work. But I'm going to roll over here to uh, eSignal. eSignal is a charting package that I really like using. Um, I've used it for a long time. And the beautiful thing about eSignal is it has what's called bar tick replay. And there are other platforms who have it. Ninja has a, has a historical bar tick replay. I just really like the one in Ninja Trader. It makes it, I'm sorry, the, real, the one in eSignal because it makes it really easy to teach. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to, I have this in bar tick replay, which means we're going to tick through this in real time and do some analysis. Now, the first thing that I want to pay attention to here and that I'm looking at on my, uh, on my chart, I'm looking at an, an Aussie dollar on the hourly time frame. So this would be a typical trading time frame for me. I can see from my analysis here, from my, from my knowledge of structure, that the market has recently put in a new structure high. How do I know that? Because we've had a break above, close above the previous high. So as I'm doing my analysis the same way that we would have done it on the previous chart, what's the next thing that I want to do? Well, I want to look left for structure. What do we always say? Look left, structure leaves clues. But what do we find when we look left here on Aussie dollar? We find that there's no structure out here at all. There's nothing here. So how are we going to determine where, is the, where this market is likely to terminate, where we could find that potential counter trend trade if I've got no structure? Well, if I've looked left and I've got no structure here initially, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to jump a time frame. I'm going to have to go up to my daily time frame. And so here, what you'll see is this is the daily chart. And the market is trading roughly the same area. I didn't get it exactly right, but we'll do a, it, it's enough to, for us to get our analysis going here, right? So now, if we're trading here, what do I got to do? Now I got to look left, and I got to go all the way back here to the middle of 2015 before I find a little bit of structure. And I know that the next swing high in this little area is going to be right here. Boom, there's my swing high. Let me just edit this a little bit to make it uh, a little bit thinner. Hopefully you guys can still see this. Actually, I'll make it fat. I'll, I shouldn't even mess with it because it's there because it's easier to see. So I know I've got a little bit of structure right there, and I know that that's the next swing high. I also know the close is down here. So if I want to, I can go ahead and drop in a close right here, giving me a, a bit of a range. Now, I'm going to try and refine this range as the market begins to move, but I know that this is going to be my range. It's going to be from about, oh, 7850s to 7804s. Now back to my trading time frame. And again, if this wasn't in bar tick replay, I could do it really quick. Um, but I know that, what did I say, 7804? Oops. Let's grab my line tool here. 7804. Uh, if I can get the line tool. There we go. 7804. Come on, baby. That's bouncing around on me. Good enough to 7850s. Boom. Right about there. Right? 
that's a pretty big range, but uh, maybe I can refine that a little bit using my knowledge of Fibonacci and structure analysis, right? So what do I want to do now? Well, now I want to try and project, just as I did on the New Zealand yen trade in the last video, I want to project where is this market likely to terminate using my Fibonacci tools. So I'm going to grab my Fibonacci extension tool, and I'm going to start measuring. Now, you have to have an understanding of structure for this to work, but I can see the rally followed by the retracement, followed by the rally, followed by the retracement. Now we've had a break of structure, and we're moving back. So I'm going to draw a couple of Fibonacci levels in here and see what I come up with. The first one I'm going to draw right here. Grab my Fibonacci extension tool, swing low to swing high, boom, and back down in. And we see that we have a kind of a 1414 coming up here inside the range. Let's see if we can find any ratio confluence in there. We're going to grab from here. Whoops, hang on. Grab from here to here, the next leg of the move. Pull back. And what do we find? We find a 618-1414 ratio confluence coming in right at the bottom part of the range. So if I want to, I can create a little area of reversal. I'm going to grab my little box tool here, and I'm going to draw from the 618 up here to kind of the top of the range, because we know those are the swing, the previous swing highs. And now I've created for myself a, a potential range that I want to watch for. Now, what does this mean? Does it mean we're going to trade inside this range? No, not necessarily. It just means we know that this is a range that we're going to want to pay attention to. That, hey, if the market gets up into this zone, there may be a decent counter trend trading opportunity. Now, here's the fun part. Now we get to move into bar tick replay, and we get to play this thing forward and see what happens. So see, you can do this analysis on your chart and then just let it sit and wait. You can even set alerts at some of these levels when you know when the market enters into a zone that you might be looking to trade in. And so now we start to walk ourselves forward. Boom. And the market kind of works sideways. Boom, boom. And we start moving up. Now we hit the 127 extension. Market respects that 127 extension. All right? Naturally, that's a good thing. And then we continue to walk forward. Boom. Oh, we came right up to it, not quite into the zone. Pulls back off of it. A less patient trader would trade, but now, boom, we move into the zone. So now what are we looking for? What's our aggressive trade? Well, our aggressive trade might just be to sell right there. But as we said before, that's a dangerous move because what happens if the market just continues to go against us? We might want to have a little bit of extra uh, a little bit of, of extra confirmation. So let's go ahead and grab our RSI. Okay. Relative, uh, where's my RSI? Relative strength index. Okay. Let's make a couple of quick adjustments to this. 7, 80, 20. We're good to go there. So what do we see about our RSI? Well, as we moved into the zone, the market was previously in an overbought condition, then we made a new structure high on bearish divergence. Now let's walk it forward. And the market rallies again into the zone. Now we're into the zone again. No double top, just a nice little move, nice little bearish divergence here on the RSI as we move into the zone, and then we come out of the zone, and it looks like we're pulling back. And if we're an aggressive trader, or if we thought about being an aggressive trader, at this point, we're pulling our hair out, right? We're saying, ah, how could this happen? I knew I should have traded early. Why didn't I take the trade? Look at how many pips I've lost. But because that's not you, because you're a patient trader, because you know what your rules are, because you don't sit around talking about what would have been, or what could have been, or what should have been, you wait patiently, and you say, I'm not an aggressive counter trend trader. I'm going to wait for the retest of the high on bearish divergence. If I get it, great. If I don't, I let the trade go. Then what happens? Boom. Right there, you get your confirmation, double top, back up into resistance. Do you have bearish divergence? Yes, you most certainly do. Opportunity for Conser more conservative traders to short the market. Then what happens? 
market rallies, trades sideways. Then we get another retracement. We're feeling good if we were that counter trend guy waiting for the waiting for the extra confirmation. We're thinking to ourselves, yeah, man, we're we're good. We're Johnny on the spot. We're doing it right. Then the market comes back and we rally back up again. And we retest a third time. Think about the emotions that are going. This is what makes this is what makes bar tick replay so powerful. Is that when you're doing your back testing in bar tick replay, you're actually you get sucked in and you start feeling the same emotions many times that you feel in live trading. You get angry and frustrated when you have to record loss after loss after loss as you're going through your trade plan. You learn a lot about yourself and a lot about your trading system by taking the time to go through this methodology and, and do the back testing the way that we teach you to do it at Trade Empowered. Then what happens? Well, we got to follow it on. We get a rally right back up again. Now we're retesting again. It looks like it might blow through, and then boom, we roll over. Now what happened? Let's grab our line tool here. Market had rallied up, pull back, rallied up, pull back, rallied up, pull back. And what did we have every single time? We had higher lows until right here. Then what did we have? Break below, close below. Alarm bells should be going off. We viol Not only did we come up into the zone, we had first opportunity, second opportunity. Now the market has broken structure to the downside. Are we going to get a third opportunity? I don't actually know. I don't actually remember. Market rolls over. Now what are we waiting for? We've had the triple top here, the double top, whatever you want to call it. Let's grab our Fibonacci retracement tool. Swing high to swing low. Looking for that 618 retracement. Okay. Looking for that 618. See if we get it. Uh, no, we don't. The market just falls off. So in this case, we got the aggressive, we got the more conservative, but we didn't get our 2618 trade. But the market rolled over. We took some money off the table. We're now back down into structure, support, and resistance where we would have taken money off in conjunction with our Fibonacci uh, levels and the market move. But you see how we did that, right? You see how we layered it in? We found, we looked at previous structure. We identified where the range was. We waited for the market to come into the range. We identified the divergence and the retest of structure, giving us multiple opportunities to make entry. Guys, this happens every single day in the market, every day. All you have to do is know what to look for, but it starts with an understanding of reading structure, of learning the language of the market. If you don't know the language of the market, you don't know how to see these things. Frankly, you're trading blind. And I hope that as you're looking at this week and how this, this, week, of tra this week of trading went phenomenally for us. We had a, a, a powerful week of trading. But as you're looking across the week and, and how the year has started out for you, we're, we're through the first quarter now, into the second quarter. The question that you need to be asking yourself is, do I know what I'm doing? How confident am I in the trading strategy that I'm using? Do I understand the language of the market? Can I do any of what Jason is showing me here? If the answer is no, then you need to work on it. You need to find yourself somebody who can teach you these skills. And I do it one way and another guy might do it another way and we both might be right. You can learn it from me, you can learn it from somebody else, but for Pete's sake, learn it from somebody. Don't be the guy who continues to wonder and continues to wander aimlessly through the markets, hoping and praying that he's doing it right and that he's going to make some money. Because even if you can do it for a short term, over the long term, the market's going to eat your lunch. Guys, thank you so very much for being part of what we do here. Make sure that you subscribe 
so that you get the video every week. And make sure you go to Trade Empowered. I've got a ton, a ton of information there for free, training uh, training programs and seminars that we've done. All of it's for free. All of it's for you guys to help you learn and become a better trader. And uh, when you're ready to take the next, next step with us, I'm ready for that too. Syndicate is every day. War Room is every morning. So make sure that you sign up for that as well. Until next week, guys, good luck, good trading. I'll talk to you then.